Hello, welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. Uh, so far, we've been going through this chapter talking about graphics, and in the last two videos, we've looked at how we can interact with our GUIs and our graphical uh, panels using mouse events and keyboard events. And so we've been able to make things change. You know, so I was able to, we had a program where we were able to draw things or make things move, and in fact, we can go look at that. Uh, we can run this and remind ourselves of what we had written. So the arrow keys will allow me to move this around and I can click and drag and draw things on here and we made it so that there are limitations to how close we can get to stuff. Uh, I have to admit the the algorithm they use for checking um, Collisions is a little bit interesting. Fortunately, we can go out of bounds here, so I can skim across the top. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so this is where we stand. Well, what if I want to have something that happens when I'm not hitting the keyboard or when I'm not using the mouse? Okay? For that, I need to utilize a timer. Yeah, I need to have something that happens at regular intervals. <clears throat> and so turns out there are a number of different timers, but if you're putting a timer inside of your GUI, you should use one that is associated with the GUIs. And the timer that we're going to use actually comes from the Java libraries. And so um, what I'd like to do here is I'm going to go ahead and declare my timer. And it's going to be a new javax.swing.timer. And if we pull up the API, so Java X swing class timer, we can look at what we need to create one of these. We need to pass it a delay, and that delay is measured in milliseconds, and then an action listener. Okay, so if I want this to happen, for example, whatever it is, 10 times a second, I'm going to pass in 100 milliseconds. And then I need to make one of these action listener things. And the Scala library actually provides some help with interacting with the default swing. There's a swing object here. And one of the uh, methods inside of here is to build an action listener. And so you pass it a Scala style function that takes an action event and gives you back unit, and it gives you back an action listener for that. So let's make sure I have the right capitalization on that. Yep. Swing action listener, and so I want to pass in something that takes an event E and then is going to do stuff. Yeah. Um, what should this do? Well, I don't know. How about I have a bunch of little dots and I make my dots run around randomly? Uh, so I could do that if I come up inside of here, val. Uh, we'll call them dots equals array dot fill and uh, um, how many of these dots do I want? How about I go with 30 of them and each one I want to I just need to store a point. Uh, turns out there's actually a nice class for this called a Java uh, sorry, the java.awt.point type, uh, which I could come up there and, and import, but I'm only using it this once here. Um, and it takes an X and a Y, so I'm going to say like 100 plus uh, util.random.nextint of 300, comma, 100 plus util dot random dot next int of 300. So these will be numbers between 100 and 400 for both the x and the y value. And I want to add into my panel then here, I want to draw these dots. So for uh, p in dots and let's go ahead and change our color again here 
uh, g dot set paint to color dot green and for each one of these I want to draw a little ellipse g dot fill new ellipse to d dot double uh, p dot dot x minus two comma p dot y minus two comma five comma five okay, so I'm drawing a circle that is five pixels across I subtract the two so that the x y is is in the center in some ways it, it really doesn't matter that much actually let's go ahead and just get rid of that we'll just keep the point as the top left corner um, Maybe these should be rectangles. I don't know. I'm not really going to care with about that too much. Just to see if that code is happy. Uh, I am missing a closed parentheses. Okay. Uppercase R on the random. Bingo, okay, so I have a bunch of little dots here, and then since they are drawn at the end, you can see them on top of them. And what I'd like is I'd like for each of them to move around randomly uh, and take one random step per uh, um, per tick on this timer. So what I want to have happen in here is to go through each of the dots. Um, the point 2D is, a, or the point type is actually mutable, so I can go directly <coughs> through this and for each p point p I'm simply going to say p dot x plus equals util dot random dot next int of three minus one and we'll do the same thing here you might wonder about this so calling next int on three gives me either zero one or two but I want to have the ability to move both left and right or up and down so if I take 0, 1, or 2 and I subtract 1 from them I get negative 1, 0, and 1 um, so this could move me to any one of the nine squares adjacent and including the point that I'm on it's possible both of these will come out to 0 um, and of course after we've changed these if I want to actually see them I need to repaint my panel so if we come up here, oh, okay, so I have a timer, all my code is happy, but it turns out just making a timer doesn't start it running. After we pop up this and we request focus, how about we do a timer dot start. <clears throat> and there you can see my little dots have started moving around, and I can move my image through here as well. Uh, it's an interesting idea would be to actually expand this out a little bit so that it's a game so that you uh, draw boundaries and those boundaries are going to prevent you moving but you could also make it so they prevent all of the little circles or all the little dots from moving and then have some type of thing where you have to either avoid the dots or maybe you can make two different classes of dots, some that you have to avoid and some that you have to collect. Uh, there are lots of possibilities, but it wouldn't take adding too much to this program to actually make that, uh, that happen in the code. But that's it for this video. Uh, it's kind of a, a simple introduction to the timer that shows you how you can build a timer, remember to start it, uh, and, and basically anything that you put inside of here is going to execute at these regular intervals and probably if it's changing something in your drawing you will want to, ha uh, to remember to repaint it. So that's it for now and we'll see you again in a bit.